high-speed operational amplifiers. Welcome to this module on high-speed operational amplifiers. This module will introduce the technology of voltage feedback operational amplifiers and current feedback operational amplifiers. We will recommend some high-speed operational amplifiers for your consideration. High-speed analog signal processing applications, such as video and communications, require op-amps which have wide bandwidth, fast settling time, low distortion and noise, high output current, good DC performance, and will operate at low supply voltages. These devices are widely used as gain blocks, cable drivers, ADC preamps, current to voltage converters, etc. Achieving higher bandwidths for less power is extremely critical in today's portable and battery operated communications equipment. The rapid progress made over the last few years in high-speed linear circuits has hinged not only on the development of IC processes, but also on innovative circuit topologies. The evolution of high-speed processes by using amplifier bandwidth as a function of supply current as a figure of merit is shown in figure 1.1. In the case of duals, triples, and quads, the current per amplifier is used. Analog devices by FET process which produced the AD7112 and OP249, 3 MHz bandwidth, 3 mA current, yields about 1 MHz per mA. The CBE complementary bipolar process, AD817, AD847, AD811, etc., yields about 10 MHz per mA of supply current. FTs of the CB process PNP transistors are about 700 MHz and the NPNs about 900 MHz. A voltage feedback or VFB op-amp is distinguished from a current feedback or CFB op-amp by circuit topology. The VFB op-amp is certainly the most popular in low frequency applications, but the CFB op-amp has some advantages at high frequencies. We will discuss CFB in detail later, but first the more traditional VFB architecture. Early IC voltage feedback op-amps were made on all NPN processes. These processes were optimized for NPN transistors and the lateral PNP transistors had relatively poor performance. Lateral PNPs were generally only used as current sources, level shifters, or for other non-critical functions. A simplified diagram of a typical VFB op-amp manufactured on such a process is shown above. The current feedback CFB op-amp topology is simply an application of these fundamental principles of current steering. A simplified CFB op-amp is shown in the figure above. The non-inverting input is high impedance and is buffered directly to the inverting input through the complementary emitter follower buffers Q1 and Q2. Note that the inverting input impedance is very low, typically 10 to 100 watts, because of the low emitter resistance. In the ideal case, it would be zero. This is a fundamental difference between a CFB and a VFB op-amp, and also a feature which gives the CFB op-amp some unique advantages. The frequency response of the AD8011 CFB op-amp is shown in the figure above for various closed loop values of gain, plus 1, plus 2, and plus 10. Note that even at a gain of plus 10, the closed loop bandwidth is still greater than 100 MHz. The peaking which occurs at a gain of plus 1 is typical of wideband CFB op-amps when used in the non-inverting mode and is due primarily to stray capacitance at the inverting input. The peaking can be reduced by sacrificing bandwidth and using a slightly larger feedback resistor. The AD8011 CFB op-amp represents state-of-the-art performance and key specifications are shown above. Traditional current feedback op-amps have been limited to a single gain stage using current mirrors as previously described. The AD8011, unlike traditional CFB op-amps, uses a two-stage gain configuration as shown in the figure above. Until now, fully complementary, two-gain stage CFB op-amps have been impractical because of their high power dissipation. 
The AD8011 employs a second gain stage, consisting of a pair of complementary amplifiers, Q3 and Q4. Note that they are not connected as current mirrors, but as grounded emitters. The detailed design of current sources, I1 and I2, and their respective bias circuits are the key to the success of the two-stage CFP circuit. They keep the amplifier's quiescent power low, yet are capable of supplying current on demand for wide current excursions required during fast slewing. The AD8011, AD8001, AD8002, AD8004, AD8005, AD8009, AD8013, AD8072, and AD8073 are in this family. We have learned several key features of CFB op-amps. The most important is that for a given complementary bipolar IC process, CFB generally always yields higher FPBW than VFB for the same amount of quiescent supply current. This is because there is practically no slew rate limiting in CFB. Because of this, the full power bandwidth and the small signal bandwidth are approximately the same. The second important feature is that the inverting input impedance of a CFB op-amp is very low. This can be advantageous when using the op-amp in the inverting mode as an IV converter because there is much less sensitivity to inverting in input capacitance than with the VFB. The third feature is that the closed loop bandwidth of a CFB op-amp is determined by the value of the internal CP capacitor and the external feedback resistor R2 and is relatively independent of the gain setting resistor R1. We will now examine some typical applications issues and make further comparisons between CFBs and VFBs. Noise gain must be distinguished from signal gain. The figure above shows an op-amp in the inverting and non-inverting mode. In the non-inverting mode, notice that noise gain is equal to signal gain. However, in the inverting mode, the noise gain doesn't change, but the signal gain is now negative R2 over R1. Resistors are shown as feedback elements. However, the networks may also be reactive. Two other configurations are shown in the figure above, where the noise gain has been increased independent of signal gain by the addition of R3 across the input terminals of the op-amp. This technique can now be used to stabilize decompensated op-amps, which are unstable for low values of noise gain. However, the sensitivity to input noise and offset voltage is correspondingly increased. It is quite common to use a capacitor in the feedback loop of a VFB op-amp to shape the frequency response as in a simple, single-pole, low-pass filter, see figure A. The resulting noise gain is plotted on a Bode plot to analyze stability and phase margin. Stability of the system is determined by the net slope of the noise gain and the open loop gain where they intersect. For unconditional stability, the noise gain plot must intersect the open loop response with a net slope of less than 12 decibels per octave. In this case, the net slope where they intersect is 6 decibels per octave, indicating a stable condition. Note for the case drawn in figure 1.2a, the second pole in the frequency response occurs at a considerably higher frequency than f of u. In the case of the CFB op-amp figure b, the same analysis is used, except that the open loop transimpedance gain, T sub s, is used to construct the Bode plot. The definition of noise gain for purposes of stability analysis for a CFB op-amp, however, must be redefined in terms of a current noise source attached to the inverting input, see figure 1.21. This current is reflected to the output by an impedance, which we define to be the current noise gain of a CFB op-amp. Current noise gain equals R O plus Z2 parentheses 1 plus R O over Z1 close parentheses. It is for this reason that CFB op-amps are not suitable in configurations which require capacitance in the feedback loop, such as simple active integrators or low-pass filters. 
They can, however, be used in certain active filters such as the Salin key configuration shown in the figure above, which do not require capacitance in the feedback network. VFB op amps, on the other hand, make very flexible active filters. A multiple feedback 20 MHz low pass filter using the AD8048 is shown in the figure above. Fast op amps are useful as current to voltage converters in such applications as high speed photodiode preamplifiers and current output DAC buffers. A typical application using a VFB op amp as an IV converter is shown in the figure above. A similar analysis can be applied to a CFB op amp as shown in the figure above. In this case, however, the low inverting input impedance R sub O greatly reduces the sensitivity to input capacitance. In fact, an ideal CFB with zero input impedance would be totally insensitive to any amount of input capacitance. A comparison in an actual application is shown in the figure above. The full scale output current of the DAC is 4 milliamps. The net capacitance at the inverting input of the top amp is 20 picofarads and the feedback resistor is 500 ohm. In the case of the VFB op amp, the pole due to C1 occurs at 16 megahertz. A compensating capacitor of 5.6 picofarads is required for 45 degrees of phase margin and the signal bandwidth is 57 megahertz. Another advantage of the low inverting input impedance of the CFB op amp is when it is used as an IV converter to buffer the output of a high speed current output DAC. When a step function current or DAC switching glitch is applied to the inverting input of a VFB op amp, it can produce a large voltage transient until the signal can propagate through the op amp to its output and negative feedback is regained. Back to back, Schottky diodes are often used to limit this voltage swing as shown in figure 1.27. These diodes must be low capacitance, small geometry devices, because their capacitance adds to the total input capacitance. In order to better understand the effects of noise in high speed op amps, we use the classical noise model shown in the figure above. The figure above shows a table which indicates how the individual noise contributors are referred to the output. After calculating the individual noise spectral densities in this table, they can be squared, added, and then the square root of the sum of the squares yields the RSS value of the output noise spectral density since all the sources are uncorrelated. This value is multiplied by the square root of the noise bandwidth to obtain the final value for the output RMS noise. The figure above shows an example calculation of total output noise for the AD8011 CFB op amp. All six possible sources are included in the calculation. The appropriate multiplying factors which reflect the sources to the output are also shown on the diagram. For G equals 2, the closed loop bandwidth of the AD8011 is 180 MHz. The correction factor of 1.57 in the final calculation converts this single pole bandwidth into the circuit's equivalent noise bandwidth. In communications applications, it is common to specify the noise figure of an amplifier. The figure above shows the definition. The high speed op amp noise summary are shown in the figure above. 